planting our vegetable garden, especially tomatoes. And we've got a different kind of a practice that we've been doing over here in one of our gardens. And it might not look like it is the cleanest prepped garden, but actually it is. What we practiced here was a no-till system. Um, and so we've had cool season cover crops growing all winter long in these two beds here. A couple of, about a month ago, we came through and just terminated them with a weed eater. So we kind of just knocked them down. Um, and so it looks a little messy, I admit it. But then after that, we've brought our chickens in. So you can see there's a little bit of a fence around. Now we did all of this for two reasons. Basically leaving the cover crop in the ground and not tilling it actually improves the beneficial um, mycorrhizae fungus that is growing in the soil. That actually has a, a beneficial a symbiotic relationship with a lot of plants, helping them to absorb more nutrients. And so by tilling it, what you're doing is actually disturbing that. So we did not till this. Um, instead, we just terminated the cover crops. Also, because we have those cover crop roots still in the ground, that actually improves the porosity. So we're allowing for better water filtration and also air in the soil profile. Now you'll notice there is still some residue on top. Of course that's going to add to that organic matter as well as the nutrients that go into that soil as well. The other thing is it sort of serves as a living mulch really. So not only does it suppress weed growth but it also um, reduces the amount of evaporation from our irrigation once we get our tomatoes planted. Now the secondary thing is that we brought in our chickens here and they really enjoyed kind of having this new play space. You could see them scratching around and sort of taking dust baths in here. Um, but really that was serving a purpose for us. It not only further kind of impacted and, and terminated those cover crops, but it also kind of allowed them to be worked into the top of that soil just slightly, not nearly as much as a rotor chiller. Um, but the other thing too is those chickens were looking for insects. So we all know that some Sometimes pests can overwinter in vegetation and so the chickens really were looking for those insects and really did a good job of cleaning this area up for us. Now again it's a little bit messier than the traditional vegetable garden prep that you might be used to but we're excited about this method and overall it really improves the soil health for your vegetable garden. So like I said, we've got our garden prepped and it's after April 15th, so it's time to start planting our tomatoes. Now we've got several laid out here um, and we're really just gonna plant one about every two to three feet here. Now, the thing about tomatoes when you're planting them, what I like to do is um, if you need to fertilize, first of all, you wanna base that fertilizer off of a soil test. However, tomatoes don't need a lot of nitrogen. Um, in fact, I've had several people tell me that they have beautiful, green, healthy tomato plants, but they're not actually getting any tomatoes off of them. And so one of the reasons may be because you're giving it too much nitrogen. So you don't want to fertilize your tomatoes with your turf grass fertilizer that tends to be high in nitrogen. You're looking for something that is like a 10, 20, 10 that has maybe a little bit more phosphorus. But again, base that off of your, to uh, your soil test results that you get. Here in our garden, we don't actually need any additional fertilizer, so we're not going to do that. But if you were to need to apply fertilizer, what I like to do is kind of sprinkle that down before you plant so that when you do go to plant, you're actually working that fertilizer into that hole. Now let's look at some transplants. So when you go to buy your transplants, they can often come in a range of sizes. In fact, we have some that we grew here and they might vary in size from very small to very tall. The ideal height of a transplant is about three to six inches. The one thing is, is if you get smaller ones, you just want to make sure that they do have at least some true leaves. So you can tell these are tomato plants based off of their leaves. The actual cotyledons are these kind of different shaped leaves down here. You never want to buy a plant that just has those cotyledons because really it makes it very vulnerable, especially to go ahead and plant that out in the garden before it's well established and has those true leaves. So this is kind of an ideal transplant height here. Now here we have some that are much taller and much leggier and you can see they're kind of falling over in the pots. Um, they're way too big for this container at this point. Um, so the thing about these is they are good, healthy plants. You're getting more bang for your buck, but the problem is, is they're gonna fall over and they might break out in the garden. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you kind of how to manage these two different types of transplants. 
So for something smaller like this, what you want to do is put your fingers between the plants and then just slightly squeeze the container and let that plant fall into your hand. You don't really want to pull the plant out because if you pull on the stem, you potentially will break it off and then that will kill your transplant. So you should see good white roots there. Um, if they are starting to circle, you just kind of want to tease those a little bit. It doesn't hurt to break some of those off and that will encourage those roots to branch and develop further into that hole. So for these, we're just gonna dig a hole here and plant them at about that same height that they were actually planted in the container. So now for these taller ones, you can see they have much bigger roots on them. They've got a much bigger stem to them and they just keep falling over in our pots here. So the thing about this is we have really strong winds here in Oklahoma and it, once we plant these, the wind's still going to want to blow these over and so it has the potential to then break it at that stem, again ruining your transplants. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually make sure you definitely see how dense this is, the root system. So we want to again pull some of those roots apart to prevent that circling of those roots once it's in the ground. And now you have two different methods that you can do on this. Um, normally when I tell you to plant a plant, I am telling you to plant it at that same level that it was planted at originally. But tomatoes are one of the exceptions and that's because they have adventitious roots. So you can see here along the stem, it's got sort of some bumps along it. And what those are, are those are little root buds that are gonna start developing. And if this stem is actually under the ground, then those will establish even more roots for you. So tomatoes are the one exception that you can actually plant those deeper than what they were originally planted. So what we're gonna do, you can see we've kind of knocked some of these lower limbs off here. And you can do this in two methods. So one, we can dig a hole just deeper and plant it straight down vertically deeper in the hole. Now the other way you can do that is create a trench in your soil. Um, so we're just gonna kind of create a, a little furrow here that's big enough to lay our tomato in. And we're actually gonna plant this sideways. So it seems very un uh, unusual a little bit for your normal garden planting. Again, we've got some other uh, stems, so we're just gonna go ahead and break those side shoots off a little bit there. And what you do is sort of just bend the stem gently upwards. So we're gonna bury that stem down in the ground, and then you can see it still is above ground here. So we're gonna allow that to continue growing and photosynthesizing above ground. But all of that stem that's buried is going to continue to grow roots, which is nice for these tomatoes as they go into the heat of the summer to actually have a larger root system on them. Now as for which variety to grow, well, the best answer is really the one that you prefer growing and actually eating. Some prefer the flavor of heirlooms, while others prefer the hardiness of hybrids. Some prefer having large slicer tomatoes that they can add to their sandwich, while some people really prefer those cherry tomatoes that they can snack on while they're out in the garden. So get what you enjoy. As for us here, in the spirit of trying new things and growing some different things in our garden, what we are actually establishing here is the not so red tomato garden. So all of these varieties are going to produce and ripen to be tomatoes that are not actually red. They're yellow and purple and some striped ones and some green ones as well. So stay tuned as we head into the season and I'll give you an update when they start producing. Check out this fact sheet for more information. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.